Well, good morning and welcome. We are delighted uh, to have uh, that you've chosen to spend this morning with us, given the fact that, of course, it's a foggy and densely foggy morning out this morning. We're here to celebrate the opening of Hope Credit Union, micro branch, as well as the additional office space and retail space within the UAPP Business Support Incubator. The credit union is a broader uh, is a result of a broader partnership that we have, of course, with uh, Hope Enterprise Corporation of the Delta that spans many, uh, at least a couple of decades, uh, with regards to their work in uh, community economic development. We're happy to have them on board with us here, uh, and of course, you'll hear a little bit more about that uh, as the program proceeds. I want to say that today we are joined by several of our friends and supporters. We also have an A-list. Mind you, an A-list of speakers representing the very best in community and economic development, organizations and activities in the state, the Delta, and the nation. And of course, uh, I think everybody has a program, uh, and the program will proceed as follows. Uh, just a little bit of information on who we have here. Uh, of course, we have our chancellor, Dr. Lawrence B. Alexander, who is going to give remarks uh, along with uh, Mr. Bill Bynum, who is the CEO of Hope Enterprise Corporation, uh, as well as Mr. Don Phoenix, uh, the Director of Neighbor Works America Southern Region, uh, Mr. Chris Massingill, Federal Chair, Delta Regional Authority, and Mr. Corey Anderson, Vice President, Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation. And so that's the program for today. You'll hear some good things. And again, this is about community economic development, access to capital, uh, and improving and empowering uh, the lives of people living in the Delta. And so with that, I give you uh, and bring to the podium my chancellor, uh, Dr. Lawrence B. Alexander, for remarks. Thank you very much, Mr. Golan. Good morning, everyone. This is indeed a great honor and a great day for us uh, because uh, this is the opening of the Hope Credit Union and we are, we are excited about having you all here today. We welcome you to this event and to this occasion. We are pleased that we have a, a chance to partner with uh, an organization like Hope because Hope is just that. It provides hope. It is about community development. It is about uh, community economic development through and through. And that's something that we indeed all need in our community. And that's something that we readily embrace. So on behalf of the faculty, staff, students, and everyone at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you and to uh, and to bring forward uh, uh, our new partners, uh, uh, Hope uh, Credit Union. And we thank you. Being the uh, son of a good Baptist preacher, I forgot to do something that was yeah. very important. And I, 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 do, I do apologize. But I, got, I, I caught it, Chris. I, I caught it. At this time, we, we're going to ask for uh, Alderman uh, and Pastor uh, Reverend Holcomb to come and, and, and give us an invocation. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we first of all thank you for all of your blessings. We praise you for this day. We praise you for this effort. We thank you for allowing us to do this on your behalf. We give you all the praise and all the glory for what you are, have done and what you are doing. Thank you, Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Without any further ado, I present to you uh, CEO of Hope Credit Union, Hope Enterprise Corporation of Delta, Mr. Bill Biden. Um, Henry, I would have done the same thing, put my boss on first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, you could have gone wrong either way. We know who the real boss is. Um, so, but thank you all for being here this morning. There's no place on earth I would rather be than right here in Pine Bluff this morning with all of you. This is Hope's return to Pine Bluff. As Henry mentioned, we've been partnering over several decades. Hope was started back in the mid-90s to provide access to financial services, initially to businesses in the Delta here in Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. And Pine Bluff was one of our first offices. We were right around the corner. Uh, and one of our most um, productive partnerships was with UAPB. Henry uh, ran 
a program that provided entrepreneurial training through our Fast Track program to dozens, uh, probably hundreds of entrepreneurs here in the central Arkansas area. And many of those were able to get financing through HOPE, um, which we used to be the enterprise corporation of the Delta. Um, over the years, we broadened our beyond the Delta, but the Delta is still very important. And again, that's why I'm so pleased to be back here, reopening uh, our presence here in Pine Bluff. And so um, I want to thank you all for being here and thank you for supporting us over the years. This is one of my, if you're like me, this is one of, this is one of my favorite seasons, times of the year. It's have so many things to be thankful for. Thankful for family, thankful for partners, thankful for the opportunities that we all have to help our fellow man. And uh, I'm thankful for the work that we do at Hope. Um, uh, I do know, though, that we don't do it by ourselves. We've been able to um, accomplish a lot over the years. We've assisted over 400,000 people in the Mid-South who needed access to basic financial services, to financing to support their businesses, to buy a home, to help send their kids to school. Um, people in the Delta um, want and need the same things that anyone anywhere else wants, but often we lack the tools. Um, we, we're not um, naive enough to think that we have realized our potential as a region. We uh, have still significant needs, significant gaps relative to other parts of the country. Um, we, Arkansas has the second highest number of people who are outside the banking system, uh, who are underbanked. Even though we've been able to uh, eliminate petty lending here, um, people still uh, rely heavily on alternative high-cost um, financial service providers, and that's something that none of us can, 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 can afford or be, be subjected to. 400% for a short dollar, uh, small dollar loan is, is and should be criminal, but people still rely on that here. Arkansas has one of the highest rates of subprime mortgage lending in the country. Um, and while everyone needs access to capital, um, people of color often disproportionately lack access to capital relative to other parts of the community. Um, Arkansas has the largest gap between black and white business ownership, uh, the second largest in the country. And so those are things that we know we can do better. And so that's another thing that I'm thankful for, is that we're here and we know that it doesn't take rocket science to solve these problems. It takes commitment. It takes um, people who are dedicated to making a difference, who recognize that there are challenges, but that we can do better. And again, that's why I'm so excited about the people that are here. We've worked with many of you over the years. I was glad to see Al Lowry from um, Simmons, who was, used to be on our board and was one of our partners. Simmons, a bank, has been an investor in a credit union, an organization like Hope over the years. They recognize that we all need to work together. Um, I saw Ines Polonius from Alt Consulting, who is a longtime partner. We work together to bring Alt into the Mid-South, and they're providing entrepreneurial training. Um, um, see my good friend from Memphis, Jeff Higgs, who's um, making a difference to thousands of people who need access to uh, good housing services in the, uh, in the greater Memphis area. It takes us all, and we do this as a region. Even though we're in Pine Bluff today, our commitment is to make these services available throughout central Arkansas. Um, and again, we know that um, we know that we can make a difference by starting and restarting our presence here in Pine Bluff. We are opening the branch here today. Um, it's going to allow us to bring our full menu of services into this region. We we still have several small business customers here who have gotten financing from Hope over the years. But again, we realize that because we have such a large underbank population. Um, people need tools to climb the economic ladder. We all want the same things for our family. We want a decent home for our kids. We want to send our kids. Um, we, we, we want them to grow up in a safe neighborhood. But if you cannot get a mortgage loan, then that makes it hard. If you don't have a banking account, you can't save and build assets. And so those are some of the tools that we'll be able to provide through HOPE. Um, we will um, we're so excited to uh, have a branch that is going to be staffed by your students, Chancellor. Um, we have um, um, just some of the brightest kids that I've ever seen here 
who at this university and two of them are our staff um, who will be uh, knocking on doors throughout the community, letting people know about how they could connect with Hope Services, how they can get open an account, how they can get a small business loan, how you can become a homeowner by partnering with Hope. Um, we, um, one of our first members is here, um, Jordan, um, is 18-year-old Pine Bluff native, opened his first account uh, with Hope. He recognized that as he becomes a young adult, he's going to need access to basic financial tools. And, it, and, and he shouldn't have to pay 400% for a small dollar loan. He should not have to go unbanked. He, as he becomes um, a young professional, he's a your biology major, um, as, as he provides services to this community, he needs to be able to buy a home to support his family and their needs, and, and that starts with basic financial services. So, Jordan, thank you for being a member owner of Hope Credit Union, and we look forward <laughs> we look forward to being uh, providing good service to you and good service to other students at UAPB and to families and residents throughout the region. Um, I look forward to talking with all of you as after the uh, program about our ser more about our services. I encourage you to talk to my colleagues here. Uh, I have several Hope members. I won't try to name them all, but I will um, point to John, um, John James, John James. John's back there. He's one of our students who you'll be seeing a lot of. Cassandra Williams is back there also. She's our regional manager. And so. Um, and Morgan, would you raise your hand? Morgan's a right here, mortgage originator. So these are folks that I encourage you to know, as well as all Hope staff, raise your hand, let folks know who you are. Um, um, you are our bosses. As a credit union, uh, um, all, every member owns the credit union. And so you are our bosses. Tell us what you need, and we'll do our best to uh, provide service to you. I'd um, like to now uh, segue to our, our good partners. We would not be here but for uh, partnership with the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Again, thank you for welcoming us um, back here. I look forward to building on the partnership that we started a couple of decades ago. Um, but also it takes strong financial supporters who also recognize that people in the Delta can do anything that anyone else can do if they have the tools. And they've supported us in providing those tools to, the, to this community and to this region. Um, the Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation has been a partner for Hope since we started. Maitland Martin hired me. He was direct one of the, um, um, back in 94. Um, um, so I owe a lot to the Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation and their financial support has been critical. They were one of our primary supporters in funding this branch. Um, the um, NeighborWorks America, um, has an initiative that you'll hear more about from my colleague Don Phoenix that focuses on historically back causes and universities and we um, couldn't be have a better partner than NeighborWorks America to um, not just help su they, the, uh, to support the opening of this branch but we're going to work with the uh, college to support co commercial development, housing development on and around the campus so we are looking forward to those investments um, bearing fruit down the road. And the Delta Regional Authority, uh, Chris Massengill has been uh, a incredible ally over the years. And um, we, he, he's been an investor in this facility and a, a staunch support of Hope uh, and the people that we are both trying to serve throughout Mid-South um, over the past several years. And so you'll hear from them now, but I'll close by again saying, I have a lot to be thankful for, and again, thankful to each of you. I really encourage you to take a close look at Hope and consider becoming a member. Even though you may have an account at Simmons, Simmons is a depositor. Simmons has been a supporter of Hope. Um, um, we we work together with Simmons and other banks and other organizations. It takes us all uh, to make this region what it can be. Um, but we need your support at Hope. We need you to become a member and to let people know about what we're doing. I think we can reach our potential as a region, but we can't do it ourselves by ourselves. We all have to work together. So thank you again for welcoming us back. And with that, I will turn it over to 
Corey Anderson. Thank you, Bill, for, for inviting us just to, to share a few remarks. Um, in the in the 50s, when Winthrop Rockefeller moved to Arkansas, as you can imagine, it was a pretty big deal uh, that one of, at that time, one of the richest men, certainly in the United States and potentially one of the richest men in the world, uh, had chosen Arkansas as his home, uh, was big news. So the, the news reports show that there was, a, there was a time when he had sort of finally landed and the newspaper reporters caught him um, at the old, I think it's the Legacy Hotel uh, near the Capitol. They said, well, you know, why are you here? And what he said was, he said, well, he said, I've got a lot to learn uh, and a whole lot to do. Uh, and what he did was he sort of set about trying to close gaps, right? And he was one of those folks that realized that, that, it, that it was about education, but it wasn't just about education. It was about community development, but it wasn't just about community development. That it was about racial equity, but it wasn't just about racial equity. That all of these things you could tie together. Uh, and this issue of, of access to opportunity uh, was one of the things that he really pushed on. And that's the thread that runs through the work that we do at the foundation. Uh, and that leads us to uh, 1992, 93, 94, uh, when Mr. Golad and I were probably in high school or just out of college long ago. Bill was probably just, just out of something, right? He couldn't have been, that's a long time ago, but, but back when we were all really young. Um, well, the foundation, uh, as Bill said, was one of those initial investors um, in, in, in Hope Community Credit Union, uh, along with several other foundations and private investors put together the three or four dollars that it took to get Hope uh, ECD up off the ground and moving. Um, since that time, we've, we've had a continuous relationship, and we're, we were excited last year uh, to be able to do a grant of $150,000 over the next two years to provide operating support uh, for this branch and for some more expansion that Hope is, is planning to do in central Arkansas. This issue of providing access to capital for marginalized communities is part and parcel of the work that we do. Uh, the foundation really is about four things right now, reducing poverty, increasing education, strengthening communities, and strengthening the nonprofit infrastructure in the state. And arguably, you could suggest that the work that HOPE is doing crosses all four of those goal areas. Uh, we're excited to continue to be a partner. Bill actually just left our board. Uh, he did six years of good service for us uh, as one of our bosses on our board. And we are really excited to continue the partnership. Um, I'll close by saying you said, you know, this is hope is coming back. Uh, again, I was just talking to somebody in here uh, and suggested, that was Mr. Golak, uh, that there's a time and a season for everything. Um, the reason that hope is back here now in this time, in this facility, uh, at, at, at this, in this particular juncture uh, is because all of the things, all of the stars have aligned uh, to make it possible for you to be successful. Uh, and when I, mean, when I say be successful, I mean make it possible for you to provide opportunities, for you to provide access to capital, for you to help people build their credits, for you to help people build homes, for you to help build the institutions uh, that had already been planted here in Pine Bluff. So we're excited about the partnership. Congratulations. Uh, we're looking forward to continuing the partnership as we expand in Central Arkansas. Thank you. I'm not going to get into those dates because I, I was counting my fingers and I said I was on my fourth job in that <laughs> So that sort of date me. And I, I'm not about to be <clears throat> the great grandfather that I almost am. I want to congratulate this community. Um, and I want to congratulate specifically Hope and Arkansas Pine Bluff the university. You know, I'm a graduate of HBCU, and I've always just dreamed about the day that communities will really recognize the, the real jewel that they have in their communities. Great value, uh, great people came through these universities, and they're continuing to produce great leaders today, and I just want to acknowledge that. For that reason, um, let me just stop and tell you who I am, in case you don't know, because I have to do the spill. Uh, NateWorks America is a nationally chartered nonprofit. We are based out of Washington, D.C., and we provide assistance to nonprofits, primarily in the form of grants and technical assistance and training information. We uh, serve a network of some 240 organizations around the country, and Hope Enterprise happened to be one of our great members in doing great things. 
The way that we provide assistance is through a five regional structure, and I happen to be the regional vice president of the Southern District, which is the best Southern region, I'm sorry, which just happened to be the best region in the country. Um, you know, we begin at West Virginia, come down to Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and I might have missed Louisiana. And so we like to believe that we are the, the, the real America in those 12 states. And I just want to recognize um, our, the person that runs our Louisiana operations in Mississippi, James Ross, who is stationed out in New Orleans, and uh, Sharon Kent, who keeps me straight in Atlanta. <laughs> and, and the reason why I wanted to point out uh, Sharon is because we started a few years ago an uh, HBCU initiative, and it was designed to really um, marry our neighbor works organizations who are in the business of providing housing and, and lending loans to people around the country with these institutions that are in community trying to educate our new leaders and really uh, have the credibility locally to make a difference. So we are proud that this is the very first event that we're kicking off and where we're acknowledging that partnership between a great local uh, institution and a neighbor works organization, HOPE. So I just want to applaud you for being the first. <laughs> and, and just for the record, I just want to uh, know, uh, there. I see some other folks here from other HBCUs that are part of the initiative. Could you just raise your hand and let people know that you're here to support them? Thank you. We also have the president of the, the HBCU coalition, uh, Ron Butler, somewhere back there in the crowd as well. As I said before, it's always great to, to see folks come together. You know, when you try to pull together collaboration, it's always this issue of power and control. And for the most part, that seemed to get in the way of true collaboration. And to see this happen today is really a testament of leadership. Because as Bill said earlier, it, it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science, but it takes leadership. Uh, so many times it's hard for leaders to come together and forget about what they're going to give up and think about what the community will gain. And this is a dem demonstration of that today, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. And I just want to just applaud all of you, because I know that you played a role in making this happen, and you continue to play a role in building this great community. With that, I just say thank you. My name is Chris Massengill, and I'm with the Delta Regional Authority. And it is a pleasure to be a part of something that is so wonderful. To be a part of a partnership that I think is all about opportunity. And when you think about opportunities in the part of the country that we live, a part of the country that's got rich history, that's got fantastic people, that's got the kind of opportunity and future that I know that some of our best days are still ahead. I am really thankful to be invited to be a part of this partnership. Because you see, at the Delta Regional Authority, we get up every day, Bill, and we think about three things, just like you do. And, and Corey, I know you, you all think about these things all the time at the foundation. And that is to help create jobs, build communities, and improve lives. This partnership that we're celebrating today does just that. And let me say thank you and congratulations to a couple of folks. Henry, what you are doing here at the Incubator and the Business Support Center is fantastic. You have been a fantastic steward of the investment of the Delta Regional Authority, and this is a great example of a good project, a project that is about creating jobs, a project that is about our small businesses and entrepreneurship. They are the heart of our economy in rural America, and particularly in the Delta region, and we need to do more of it. And when we see that we have a new partnership and the president's coming back to this part of the country, Bill, with the opening of this branch, that is tremendous. And I'll say this, Bill, you are a true champion for the Delta region in this country and the people that we love. He is recognized all over the country. 
He is recognized with my colleagues in Washington as a true leader, somebody who understands trying to provide the services for our people in Washington, D.C. And sometimes that can be very difficult, trying to explain the way that we do business and the kinds of needs that we have and the challenges that we face in our part of the world is sometimes very difficult getting that message across to our leadership in D.C. But I can tell you when I've got good friends and advocates and allies like Bill Bynum and Hope, I know I've got somebody on my side that can help me deliver that message. You all, and you all need to give him another round of applause for his hard work. <laughs> UAPB is a true treasure. It is a financial educational institution for this region and for this state. And San Chancellor, congratulations again. I had a chance to, to meet you a couple of months ago when I came for the first time in many, in many, well, I guess it's been many years, Henry, since I've had a chance to come back. I feel like when I come back to Pine Bluff in Jefferson County, it's kind of like my adopted home. And Wanda Neal, it sure is good to see you. She's kind of been like a second mom. And you talking about somebody that put a knot in your ear and she is not afraid to do it. She will. Wanda, it's great to see you and all the red coats from the Alliance and, and the Chamber. But, but let me say this, when you've got two incredible entities like UAPB and like Hope coming together to forge this partnership, this is good for business. This is good for our people. This is good for the community. This is exactly the kind of partnerships and the kind of services we want to continue to invest in because it's the right thing to do. This helps move our entire region forward. And then when you add the additional partnerships like the Winrock Foundation, and when you add the kind of partnerships with the people that are in this room, we will be successful. We will climb those challenges that people say that we have in our part of the world. We also know that we have a lot of things to offer. And what this branch will provide is really about entrepreneurship. It really is about opportunities of hope. And that is exactly what we're celebrating today. I am truly glad to be considered a partner, Bill. And I appreciate, Chancellor, you giving me an opportunity to be a partner of you and UAPB. And Henry, you keep on doing great work because this incubator is very important. The backbone of our economy is small businesses and entrepreneurs. And we need to continue to grow those right here in Jefferson County, in Pine Bluff, in this very facility so we can continue to move our region forward. Thank you all very much. God bless you and happy holidays. I told you we had an A-list of uh, speakers here today, and, and, and one thing I like about each one of these uh, people represented here today, not only are they individually committed to the work, but their organizations have a history of being committed to the types of things that not only Pine Bluff need, but uh, Star City and Dumas and, and uh, Olive Branch, Mississippi, and, and, and throughout the Delta. So we're very happy and proud to have uh, a partnership that is expanding and extending. Uh, Bill mentioned a couple of things. We have, this partnership is, is, is of course, finances is a, is a key part of it, but we're looking at a lot of different things we want to do in the community. Uh, we've already begun the dialogue around uh, certain projects that we want to see uh, come to fruition. Matter of fact, uh, we're visited here today, and I'll uh, do this as a segue. Uh, here today, Bill, I don't know if you had a chance yet to meet Maxine uh, and uh, Barbara Bryan with area who's actually here to do our market study for the plaza area. So they're here actually from Baltimore, Maryland, and Chicago, uh, Illinois. That they're, they're here to help us, Chris, continue the work that we're doing and to add additional value to the community. Uh, we're going to ask, uh, uh, also, uh, Dunn mentioned and, and recognized our colleagues with the HBCU Coalition, of which I'm a board member, and thankful to them for making the drive from Shreveport uh, down at uh, Southern down in Shreveport as well as from Lemoyne Owens College over in Memphis and then uh, the executive director Ron Butler who is uh, as I said our executive director for the HBCU Community Development Action Coalition uh, which is actually he, he came probably one of the farthest distance he's from Miami is where we are headquartered at so we're just grateful and thankful for all of the people that came out today at this point we are going to ask you to count to come around and we're going to do a, a ribbon cutting uh, here uh, in the facility.